and I'm live. Afternoon, it's Friday again, I can't believe it's Friday again. Let me just check on my iPad and see if I'm looking how I would hope there. It looks like I am, I'm just going to turn the volume down, I always forget to do that before I start. Okay. Right, I don't know if anybody's here yet. If you're here, please um, say hello. Let me know who you are. Tell me what the weather's like where you are. Um, it's been horrible today here. Uh, not terribly cold, not cold at all actually compared with earlier in the week, but um, very, very wet. I'm looking out the window here. There is some blue sky, so fingers crossed. I'm quite hopeful for this afternoon. Okay, I'm just gonna put some hand cream on. I should have done this first. I've been cutting card all morning and my hands get so dry. I'm just going to put some hand cream on. Otherwise, I don't know. Do yours get dry when you're crafting? Um, mine feel like the skin's going to crack if I don't put hand cream on. So let me just put some on. I've got a really good one that doesn't make my card greasy. So it's safe to put on when I'm about to do some more crafting. Okay, Mary's here. Hi, Mary. And Sandy's here. Hello, Sandy. So Mary, I probably know what the weather's like with you because you're not very far away from me. How about you, Sandy? What's the weather like in Lincolnshire? Is it sunny Lincolnshire today? I hope so. Belinda's here. Belinda says, hi, Sandy. Hi, everyone. Marjorie's here. That's a nice surprise. Marjorie, hello. Sandy says, it's wonderful here and one of her deliveries has turned up. I'm delighted for you, Sandy. I'm going to be talking about deliveries briefly in a minute. So, um... Yes, Pam's here. Hi, Pam. Lovely to have you. What's it like in New Milton, Pam? Waiting to see if there's anybody else. Ah, oh, well, I, as I said, I can't believe it's Friday today. It seems like five minutes that I was here chatting with you last week, um, and another week has gone. We're nearly at the end of January. I quite like ticking off the months this time of year because I'm not really a winter person. Um, if it's blue skies and snowy, that's a whole different matter, but it almost never is here. And we've had so much rain recently. Um, and when it's been cold and frosty, it's also been really grey, but without the joy of snow. So, uh, well, I'm one of those people who love snow. I know lots of people don't for perfectly good reasons. But, um, but yeah, so I'm quite happy to tick January off at the weekend um, and February. And then come March, um, about mid-March, I tend to think of it as, as early spring. My husband is much more optimistic. Um, he's talking about it being spring nearly already, but um, oh, give me June, July, August. That's the, the time of the year I'm happiest. Um, uh, Candy's here too. That's really nice. Um, Sandy said it was this morning. It's overcast a little now. At least it has stopped raining. Yeah, thank goodness for that. Oh, excuse me. Right, there we go. Uh, Gillian's here. Hello, Gillian. Gillian says hi to everybody. Lovely to have you, Gillian. And Sandy says, as long as she wakes up in the morning, she's a positive person. Well, there's a lot to be said for that. And then she says her glass is always half full, although some days she can't find her glass. <laughs> yeah, we all get days like that. But that's excellent. Good. I'm glad. Glad you're well. All right, so what's been happening in my life over the last week? Um, well, in terms of... Um, non-crafting I always do loads of crafting I'm very lucky this is my job um, but in terms of, of non-crafting what have I done um, I sign up every year to an online mixed media class which lasts all year with a lesson a week so I've been beavering away with that which has been fantastic I've done various different ones over the years I've done life book which was excellent um, and the one I've done for I think this is the fifth year running is um, called Wanderlust uh, it's run by Everything Art, so if you're interested in mixed media, take a look at that. Uh, we have a whole load of different teachers across the year, teachers from all over the world, and we get a video lesson a week. It's all mixed media, and we do all kinds of things. Um, I absolutely love it, so I always spend my Sunday afternoons doing uh, Wanderlust. If I can squeeze another hour or two in at some point during the week, I do as well. Um, who else is? I've just seen another message come up. Oh, Ruth. Ruth says oh, she's here, but the screen has frozen. Oh, no, Ruth. Try refreshing your screen um, and see if that helps. Has anybody else's screen frozen? Let me know if it has. Um, so, yeah, hopefully refreshing your screen will help, Ruth. I'll, I'll see if anybody else has got problems. So what else have I done? I've done my art course. 
Um, last weekend I um, attended an online film festival screening, that was good, that was the um, Banff Mountain Film Festival which I normally go to the cinema and see with my daughter um, and, and of course you know that hasn't happened for quite some time um, but they've been offering virtual um, festivals so I think we had six or seven different films all with some kind of a mountain theme to them. Uh, my absolute favourite was the people who walked through the Grand Canyon, that was absolutely amazing. It's a 700 mile walk because you can't actually walk down on the canyon floor for most of it so they were up high on cliff edges and all sorts, that was absolutely brilliant. If you're interested in something like that they do a whole lot of, of different screenings throughout the year, I think they've got three different lists of films um, it costs £10 uh, for a whole evening of films um, and you usually get about three nights to watch them over if you want to. We sat and, and kind of binge watched them all in one evening. But you can get, you know, the whole family can watch, which is pretty good value, I think. So if you're interested in that, I'm not on commission. Um, you can look them up. Uh, their website is Banff, that's like the Canadian town, B-A-N-F-F hyphen um, UK dot com. Banff hyphen UK dot com. Okay, Sandy's screen is fine, um, so maybe it's just you Ruth, let us know if your screen's okay. Have you got sound? You may not know. Um, Lorraine is here, hi Lorraine, she says hello to everyone. Um, what else? And I'm watching a live concert tonight online, so my life has become <laughs> either I'm in my craft room or I'm in my craft room and online, but I think probably everybody's lives are a little bit like that at the moment, aren't they? What have you all been doing this week? Tell me what you've been crafting tell you if you've been if you've been baking um have you had any zooms with family or, or anything exciting let me know what you've done or even not very exciting because to be honest our lives are so kind of closed in at the moment that what anybody is doing seems to be absolutely fascinating because um there's so little that we can do <laughs> okay um what's new in the world of stamping up um well to start with let me give you a shipping update so you know by now there are delays with shipping and I'm really, really sorry. Um, it's not the kind of customer service I like to give to make you wait ages for your orders. However, there has been some progress this week. Um, UPS are improving their tracking system. It's still not hugely accurate because they have these automatic kind of waypoints set up in it. And when a parcel reaches a certain point between the warehouse and your house, um, it will trigger an email with an estimated delivery time and unfortunately because the time it's taking parcels to get from one waypoint to the next is hugely variable and much longer than normally expected when the emails are triggered to tell you when to expect your parcel they're not very accurate either because they're based on inaccurate information um, I can now see if something is delayed due to a Brexit related problem which tends to mean a paperwork issue um, or just being very slow to clear customs and unfortunately where we didn't used to have to contend with customs at all of course with Brexit we now have three lots of customs if you can believe it there is apparently an EU customs check or process there is a German customs process um, because our warehouse is in Germany our European warehouse is in Germany and it serves all the European countries that Stamping Up operates in and then when it finally gets to the UK it's got to go through UK customs no we didn't have to do any of that before so that's where a huge delay is. So it's new processes, lots of delays because of that. Massive amounts of parcels and the fact that pretty much nobody other than UPS, I understand it, is shipping from Europe to the UK. So UPS is getting all the parcels traffic, which means their shipping volume is enormous. They put on extra shifts, extra days a week, um, but they can only work as fast as they can work and they are held up by customs as well. So things are taking much longer. Uh, the good news is that parcels are moving and parcels are being delivered. Two of my customers received parcels yesterday. I received two this morning and um, I've got two more customers who, fingers crossed, are going to get their parcels today. Certainly their parcels are in the UK and the delivery date was given as today, so I'm really hoping they get theirs. Um, I've also got about five due to arrive next week, although they do keep changing the delivery date, so whether I'll actually get them next week or not, I don't know. And then I've got a whole load more which are still in Frankfurt. The other thing that's happened is that parcels are not being delivered in order. So a, an order, for instance, that was placed on the 3rd of January is still in Germany, whereas an order that was placed on the 18th of January has been delivered. 
So there was a whole load of shipments in a container where another company's parcels were in the same shared container and the other company's paperwork was incorrect and so the whole shipment was held up by quite a lot of time unfortunately. So orders that were placed at the very beginning of January up until about the 7th, something like that, um, have been hugely delayed. I'm so sorry for the delays, I'm keeping everybody informed as best I can. But I think it's better news this week than there was last week. So I've seen some comments come up, let's have a look. Um, so Sandy's parcel was down for delivery on Monday but it came today. Well, early delivery is always great. And the parcels need uh, somebody at home to receive them. And let's face it, we're not, not going anywhere, are we? So it kind of doesn't matter if it comes on a day when you weren't expecting it. But I'm so pleased it's there, Sandy. Um, what else? Oh, Mary says it's not exciting, but she has just had her first COVID vaccination. Really good news, Mary. I'm so pleased for you. Uh, let's have a look. Sandy says, oh, her daughter lives near Banff. So pre-COVID, we got to see it regularly for real. And she's a grizzly bear fan. I love bears too, Sandy, but preferably a very long way away from me. Um, Belinda says the later orders seem to be gradually coming through. Hooray! There still seems to be a glitch around orders placed at the beginning of the month. Hers is still in Frankfurt too. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Belinda. They'll get to us. We've just got to keep the faith. Um, what have we, else have we got? Ooh, um, I think I might have missed a comment because somebody said Marjorie's been busy oh here we are so marjorie's had her first vaccine too a oh, wonderful marjorie she's made jam and marmalade jacobean style applique blocks she's bought fabric she doesn't need hello everyone and happy birthday carol thank you marjorie wow that's an awful lot i want to know what kind of jam you made marjorie i know from personal experience your marmalade is amazing what kind of jam did you make um, and I don't know what Jacobean style applique blocks are, so a little description of that would be fantastic. And, and bought fabric you didn't need. Hey, we all know about buying things we don't need. Um, we're just buying them um, and we don't need them at the moment. You know you'll find a use for them and it may be this year, it may not, but that's okay. Um, there's a theory that a certain proportion of crafters are also collectors. I think probably that's most of us, to be perfectly honest. I know I'm a collector. Um, okay, some more messages here. Sandy's saying happy birthday, Carol, too. Ruth's had a Zoom with five families they were with in Naples in Italy. Wow. We have a monthly chat since lockdown and we used to get together once a year. Wow. Well, I'm sorry you can't get together properly in person, Ruth. Um, the thought of, of Naples and all that Mediterranean sunshine is quite appealing, I must say. <laughs> um, but I'm glad you could Zoom with them. I think Zoom... Zoom kind of personal things are, are funny, aren't they? Um, I don't mind Zoom for meetings. I have meetings on Zoom um, with colleagues and, and for business building and things like that. Um, and I have Zoom meetings for all sorts of other things. But when it comes to a Zoom meeting with personal friends, I find I'm just really upset afterwards and I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's not being able to be close to the people. I don't know whether it's the fact that even when you've got the facial thing going on, um, it's still not the same as face-to-face -face communication. I don't know what it is. I, I really, really don't like Zoom with, um, with <laughs> real people, I was going to say. People I know very well personally, that's what I was going to say. Having said that, where would we be without Zoom? No idea. Okay, Antriana's here. Hi, Antriana. She has two hobbies, one buying craft supplies, the other using them, but buying outweighs the using them. <laughs> That's okay, Andriana. Most of us are like that. It's not a problem. Just keep doing what makes you happy. Okay. Oh, Marjorie said it was blackcurrant jam she made. Oh, delicious. Delicious. If you have a scone, that is the best jam to have on a scone, in my opinion. Okay, Belinda says Marjorie. She's about to, oh, Belinda's about to buy more fabric too. Nicholas Fabric have a discount code at the moment during the transfer of their business. <laughs> Mary says that's her favourite jam too, Marjorie. <laughs> You're going to be very popular, Marjorie. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about shipping. Um, I'm really sorry, but things are moving, so there's a positive there. Um, we've got one more month of celebration, so if you're um, a shopper, then you will be getting something for free from the special brochure every time you spend £45. I just love that. I love that so much. Um, 
and if you uh, gather together orders from family and friends or if you have got Christmas money maybe or even if you're just thinking well I'm not going out um, I've got all my gin and tonic money or whatever it might be um, your pizza money maybe um, then if you place a large order for yourself 275 pounds then there's an extra free stamp set you get with that punch party so that's in the back of the brochure have a look at that um, I can tell you more about how to do that if you're interested um, and of course as always the best deal is to join my team those of you that like to buy and I, I can't address this at Antriana because I know she's a demonstrator already um, but um, but those of you that, that love to buy your crafting supplies, honestly, joining is such a great deal. Um, you get £31 worth for free the minute you start. Um, and at the moment, you'll get five stacks of patterned paper as well thrown in. So um, let me know if you're interested in that. Best thing I ever did. I've been a demonstrator 10 years later this year. Um, and I'm so happy I did it. I've made some really, really nice friends. And I don't think I'd be chatting with all of you had I not become a Stamping Up demonstrator. And I never anticipated that either. Okay. Oh, Mar Marjorie's going to send some Jacobean photos to the groups. I love you, Marjorie. Thank you. We will really look forward to seeing those. All right. So um, what else was I going to say? I got distracted there for a minute. Um, yeah, celebration. Uh, just a few class deadlines. If you want to book for the February techniques class, paper crafting techniques, um, you'll get videos to teach you four different um, inky and paper crafting techniques um, and a video to show you how to make up a project which is included as well. So that's the techniques and fancy fold cards as well. Those two classes for February, the last date to book those is Friday next week, so a week today. Um, I can give you more information on those if you would like. Um, uh, there's also information on my Facebook page about that and on my website. My website is sallybowman.stampinup.net so you can find information there but I'm always happy to answer an email or a phone call as well. Um, the fancy fold cards, you make templates for two fancy folds and you'll make a project for each. So there's four videos at the moment, it's all videos. Four videos included for that and they send you all the materials as well. Um, Sandy saying she's so glad that she joined to be a demonstrator. She yes, Sandy has just just promoted, so she gets twenty five percent off everything she orders. Now that has to be good. Um, and Antriana says it's a good deal. It's the best decision she made. So yeah, I can't disagree with you either of you, Sandy or Antriana. Okay, and the other class that you need to think about booking if you would like to do it is the spring extravaganza. Uh, so the closing date to book that is Friday next week. Uh, normally I would hold an in-person event, obviously I can't do that this year, um, so it's going to be a live online event and it will all be recorded, uh, there will be three live sessions online, I'm going to set up a special Facebook group for everyone in the class, so just people doing that class will be able to come together as we are today and, and chat and craft together. I'll be crafting live and showing you the project and making the project and you can either make along with me or you can watch and then re-watch them later when you craft your own project. And after each session, I will upload that session's video to YouTube and email out all the links. So um, it's, it's great even if you've got people that don't use Facebook but use YouTube, which and I know there are quite a lot of people like that, then they will still be able to take part in the class. Um, so that will all happen um, in March. Uh, March, I think it's the 5th. I've got a little sign over here. Let me just lean over and have a look. I really should know this. Um... March the 20th, March the 20th, and I've just realised I haven't got my microphone on, nobody said the sound is dreadful, so maybe it isn't too bad, I will put that on in a sec when I go to the hands down and I'm fiddling around, I'll, I'll fiddle around with my microphone at the same time, sorry about that, I hope you've been able to hear me, so yes, yeah, spring extravaganza, um, bookings close on Friday next week, it's essentially a roughly six hour class, live on March the 20th and then you'll have the recordings uh, to look at forever. I'll be sending you a huge box of goodies. All the projects are based around the Sand and Sea suite. Uh, you'll get the stamp set included. If you've already got the stamp set but you'd still like to do the class then you'll get a credit. You can choose something else instead. Um, and there are other options. If you'd like me to include the embossing folders or the dies then I can. Um, and if you get the the stamps as well uh, uh, the dies as well as the stamps then you'll get a free celebration item so I've got an information sheet I can send you all of that 
Um, the all day class starts at £48 if you can pick up your goodies from me, otherwise I can post them out and obviously it's a bit more if you're adding embossing folders or dies. But I'm really looking forward to that class uh, and to making six projects with you all. Alright, so now I think it probably is the hands down moment. Um, I'm just going to see, oh that's interesting, so Belinda's saying actually I'm hearing you better wherever you have the mic now, that's interesting. So I'm, I'm about, I don't know what I am, 18 inches away from my phone Belinda. Um, I'll try the mic when um, I do the hands down bit because I think that's often when I come and go a bit because I'm kind of leaning right and left across my desk and also the phone is in a completely different position. Um, and that's when people seem to have had problems with hearing me. So we'll see how it is and I will respond to you all. All right, so I'm gonna do some um, cards based on silhouettes today, but first I'm gonna work through how to clean your stamps. So bear with me. Um, I'm gonna cover you over and move the camera around and then hopefully uh, I will be able to uh, get a better, I, you'll be able to see my hands and get a better idea of what I'm doing. So I need to try and remember to keep talking to you which is the bit that's quite hard to do when I'm also trying to concentrate on the view. So let's see. Okay, so I've fiddled with my stand. It's probably about right. Now I've got to just make sure that I reverse everything so I'm neither upside down nor back to front. All right, so I think I'm there. All right, let me take the post-it off and wait for my iPad to catch up and then I'll see how it's all looking. Okay, I've just got to wait, there's a bit of a lag. Okay, move that down a bit. All right, I'm just gonna fiddle a little bit more, so just look away. If uh, you are prone to motion sickness. Okay, I'm still trying to fiddle. I'm trying to get rid of that bit of my desk that's showing and show a little bit more of my working area. Better. I think that's better. Yes, I think it's better. Okay, so I'm gonna chat for a bit. Will you let me know how the sound is? I haven't put the microphone in yet, but I will if need be. So Sandy says my catalogue's a well-worn copy. It is indeed, Sandy. It is indeed, yes, well-thumbed. Um, I've even had to, I don't know if you can see, I've even had to reinforce it with some sellotape because I was losing the front cover. So <laughs> it's very well, very well, um, very well worn. So I'm gonna show you the stamp cleaning things in there in just a minute. Um, but before that, I'm going to bring in the various options you have for cleaning stamps. The first thing I need is some stamp. Okay, that's one set. If I was organised, I would have these on my desk, wouldn't I? There we go. All right. So I've got stamps and I've knocked my light over. My light is just a little bit top heavy and I tend to catch it. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna ink some stamps and do a little bit of stamping and then clean them. So I've just brought in a random ink pad. I've got soft suede here. And let's, let's use the bunny from Nature's Beauty. Obviously it doesn't matter at all which stamp I use because all stamps can be cleaned and let's find the birds in here they're quite a good size so this set is high tide which is I'll show you the state of my stamps you can see how much I have loved using these stamps it's one of my most inked sets so let's put the birds on a block there okay <coughs> So if you have any wood mount stamps, uh, which you may have, we don't sell them anymore, but you might have some in your collection. I'll also try and remember to talk about cleaning wood mount stamps. Um, mostly the advice is the same. Photopolymer stamps, uh, there is some slightly different advice. First of all, let me get these stamps inky and I'll just stamp them to get 
of most of the ink off just as if I was stamping in real life there we go so that's my waders and my rabbits so there's my two inky stamps so the first thing I always do when I'm cleaning stamps is once I've used them I then get as much of the excess ink off on scrap paper as I can I always use grid paper um, it's in the catalogue if you're interested it's really good value because it's thick absorbent paper it gives you a nice surface to stamp on anyway and uh, you can use the grids and the lines to help you keep things straight uh, but really it'll just absorb all that excess ink it's just the right size it's a three pretty much size and it's just the right size to to kind of cover the area that you need for stamping on um, and I so I always stamp my stamps on here again once I've used them on my project I stamp them a few more times now you can see there's actually still quite a lot of ink on there so all the time I can get that off onto my scrap paper, I'm not going to end up with that on my cleaning pad. I'll do the same with the rabbit. Let's get most of the ink off that. There we are. So I've got as much ink off these as I can and before I actually go to cleaning them. So the two main ways of cleaning them that are recommended are either a Simply Chamois or a Stamping Scrub. Okay. The two ways which are commonly used and are not necessarily recommended are baby wipes. Now, if you're going to use baby wipes, um, make sure that they are alcohol free. You don't want any of those. You know, those little wet ones and all those kinds that come in the little packs. Those particularly are full of alcohol. Do not use them. They will destroy your stamps. Um, and make sure they don't have any baby lotion in them or any aloe vera either because all those things are really bad for your stamps, particularly photopolymer, but also rubber stamps as well. So if you must use baby wipes, and I must admit I use them sometimes, um, and particularly if I'm traveling um, and taking a bit of stamping with me or something like that, then they can be really, really useful. But make sure you find um, some which have no baby lotion, no aloe vera and no alcohol in them. But they're not ideal. The other way is people run their stamps under the tap. Um, now, I'll in terms of photopolymer stamps you can do that and they won't hurt if you run them under the tap at all and in fact if you find that they're not sticking to your blocks properly maybe they've got dropped on the floor I do that all the time with mine and they get a bit fluffy um, or they've just been used a lot and they've got lots of fingerprints on the, the, the side that sticks on the block if they find they're not sticking run them under the tap um, with just a tiny little bit of gentle soap or gentle washing up liquid rub them all over both sides and let them air dry and you will find that they will be super sticky just as if they were new. So you won't hurt your photopolymer stamps doing that, but it's not very convenient if you're actually having a stamping session, which is why the other methods really come into their own. If you've got stamps on wooden blocks, whatever you do, don't put them under the tap because very often the wood will absorb the water, the wood will swell, um, and then you will have a wonky block and almost certainly your stamp will come away from it. So definitely don't do that if you've got wooden mounted stamps. And if you have the foam mounted stamps, they are mounted on sponge. So we call these clear mount, uh, sorry, not clear mount. That's what we used to call them. We now call them cling mount, cling mount stamps. Um, and you don't want that sponge absorbing water. So it's not ideal to run these under the tap either. So try not to use baby wipes. Don't run your stamps under the tap to clean them as a matter of course, although that will be really good for your cling stamps if they're not sticking well. So what can you do? Well, the most economical method is a Simply Chamois. Now, mine is very old, it's very stained, um, and it didn't look like this when it came. So let me show you the catalogue page, which is very small, but hopefully I can hold it up to the camera here. See, it was a pretty lilac when it was new, really nice. So this is page 163 in the catalogue. So this... Um, I'm just looking to see if it tells you what it's made of. I don't think it does. Um, it's just, it's like, um, I don't know, a very soft, flexible piece of sponge. And it doesn't leave lint on your stamps or anything else. And when it arrives, normally they are quite soft and pliable like this. But once you've taken them out of the wrapper, you'll find that they tend to dry out and they go very, very hard. Um, almost like a, I don't know. Uh, like a, a cheese biscuit, a cracker, really, really quite hard and biscuity. Just run them under warm water, if necessary, let them soak for a little bit and they will absorb the water and then they'll become soft and flexible like this again. 
I keep my chamois in a clear mount stamp case. That helps to keep it moist. Um, it will still dry out because these aren't completely airtight, but it, it keeps it moist for quite a long time. When it starts to get full of ink and you're not cleaning your stamps off anymore, sometimes they even seem to come off inkier than when they started, then that's the time to wash it. You can either just take it to the tap, wash it with just a little bit of um, mild soap or washing up liquid and plenty of rinsing, and it will come up nice and clean. It will stain, but don't worry about that because this ink is not gonna come off on anything. So don't worry about that. But what you will have done is got rid of all the loose ink from the fibres of the sponge. The other thing you can do is you can put them in the washing machine on a, a quick cycle, uh, not too hot, 30 or 40 degrees, and they will come out really, really clean. But you're probably not going to want to put your washing machine on just for one of these. I've got a whole load of them that I use for classes. Um, so I would put on a small load with those. Um, once upon a time, I did anyway, uh, when I was running classes. Um, so, but that is an alternative that you can use. So how do you use it? Well, I've just got this wrung out um, with tap water in it. I ran it under the tap, wrung it out really, really well. So if I squeeze this now, nothing is, oh, there's a tiny drop there, but pretty much nothing is coming out of it, but it is damp. So that's, that's how damp you want it. A few drops squeezing out, but not completely wet. And then all you do is you rub your stamps on it and the ink will come off. Now, hoping you can see that is nice and clean it's stained because photopolymer stamps stain as we all know maybe i'll move that so you can see it with a there we go so there's no ink on that stamp now at all it is a little bit damp but that will dry quite quickly because this is only damp to the touch it's not uh soaking wet so there's no pools of water in the hollows of the stamp and my red rubber stamp exactly the same just dab it press it up and down rub it and that is beautifully clean so stamping chamois then, this is a great option um, and you can just keep it by the side of you in your stamp room. Now I'm just going to get those stamps inky again. And while I do that, Belinda has said she loves her grid paper. She writes on it, stamps on it, designs on it, etc. She thinks her grid paper sheets are sometimes artworks in themselves. They are, absolutely. You get all sorts of colours. They catch all the ink if you're sponging or using the blending brushes fantastic grid paper all right so then the gold standard if you like for cleaning your stamps uh, it would also give them a really really thorough clean is a stamping scrub so this comes in this kind of I don't know what color that is dark gray box it's quite big it's it's taller than my hand it's got silicon feet or silicon buttons I suppose on it top and bottom and it opens up with a hinge like this and inside you've got these chenille pads. I don't know as I'm rubbing them if you can see it's chenille, you probably can't. Um, and then in the corner there is a little bit of marking. Now I've gone over mine with a white chalk marker. Um, and this one has got three little droplets. They're, they're moisture droplets. So this is the side you use wet. And this one here has got a sunshine. Again, I've gone over it with a white marker so it's easier to see. So this is dry. So we have wet and dry. And on the wet side, you can use it with a spritz of water, but much, much better is stamping mist. So these you'll all find on that same page in the catalogue. Um, this is the old style of bottle, which is quite a small one. It now comes in a much bigger bottle, which is great because you don't need to order it as often. And all I do when I want to clean my stamps is I add two or three spritzes of this onto my scrub. Um, so I've just sprayed that and then I just rub my dirty stamps on here. And those fibres will get into all the nooks and crannies on my stamp. It's beautifully clean. And then on the dry side, I rub it on the dry side. So that is now completely dry and ready to go straight to a different colour or to put it away. It works brilliantly on photopolymer stamps as well. So that's nice and clean and then I can dry it off um, and in this cleaner there is also a conditioner as well so it keeps your stamps in really nice condition they will just go on and on and on if you use the stamping scrub so I really really recommend a scrub and stamping mist um, they're not the most exciting thing to spend your crafting budget on I will give you that but honestly they are just brilliant for cleaning your stamps after a while, when you find that um, your stamps are not coming away clean, that is because all the fibres on here are absolutely full of ink that's come off your stamps. And that's an easy fix. You just take it to the sink, 
run the tap down it. Um, I get it wet both sides. Then I add just a little bit of mild washing up liquid. I rub it with my hands, a bit like giving yourself a shampoo and rinse it clean and then stand it up on the draining board. Um, and depending on how warm it is, uh, that will dry overnight or sort of by the next evening. Sometimes if it was really inky, um, I come back to it after half an hour and rinse it again because some of the ink will have still stayed in there despite the fact that I thought I'd rinsed it all out and it will come, you'll see colour running out again. Um, I also put it in the airing cupboard. Once it's not dripping anymore, I pop it in my airing cupboard overnight and by the morning it's, it's ready to use. I've had my scrubs for about eight years. They get a huge amount of use. Uh, they get washed at least weekly, sometimes more often. Um, and this is pretty much exactly as it was when I bought it. So they are fantastic um, workhorses. And frankly, I think every grafter room should have one. They're absolutely brilliant. Uh, the only ink I don't clean off directly on these is Versamark because it's quite sticky and the white craft ink because although it will clean off beautifully, you end up with this white cast all over, um, which will transfer to your other stamps. And um, you can just clean a stamp once on here and then it needs washing. It'll come off. You just wash it in the way I've described and it will come out. But with those two, Versamark and the White Craft ink, I do use in that instance a baby wipe on my stamp and I get the worst of the ink off. And then I clean them on here in the usual way. And any little traces of those inks um, don't cause so much effect on this that I have to wash it straight away. Belinda is saying she assumes there's no way to stop the photopolymer stamps going pink with use. None that I have found, Belinda. Um, one suggestion that I have tried is that you, when you get a new photopolymer stamp, you ink it with Versamark ink um, and stamp it off and ink it and stamp it off a few times and then you ink it with Versamark and ink it with a colour and stamp that off and then you clean it. Um, personally, I haven't found that has any dramatic effect. It has a slight effect, but very little. Not worth the trouble, in my opinion. Um, but you could try it and see what you think. So, no, I'm afraid not. It's just the nature of the material, I'm afraid, that they do stain. Um, and I try and see it as the mark of a well-loved stamp. <laughs> okay, so that is stamp cleaning. If you've got any questions about stamp cleaning, please let me know and I will answer them. Put these away and uh, then I'm going to get on and do some crafting. All right, move the catalogue. I'll keep the scrub because I might decide to use that. You can't see, but I've got another desk in my craft room and it's absolutely covered with stuff, stuff that I've just moved from here. Okay, now. How's the sound, people? Because I don't have the microphone on, but I can certainly pop it on very quickly and easily. So please let me know if the sound is coming and going. I've just had more tea. That's really good, but it's going cold. All right, so I promised you stamping with, or, or, or cards with silhouettes, I should say. So I'm going to do some stamped cards with silhouettes and I'm going to do some non-stamped cards with silhouettes. Sandy says the sound is good. Great. Thank you, Sandy. I don't know what anybody else thinks. Are you all finding the sound is okay? All right, I'm pulling in all sorts of bits here. I'll tell you what I've got in a second. Just trying to have got some some extra ones to show you which I'm just putting to the side I'll show you those afterwards there we are some crafty bits and pieces all right so I did also say that I would be using the blending brushes again I love these so much Marjorie says the sound is fine. Belinda says it's really clear. Lorraine says it's all okay. Thank you. Okay, right. Well, let's leave well alone, shall we? All right. So I've got my blending brushes. I'm desperately waiting for some more of these to come. Um, I've got some in Germany. <laughs> They've been in Germany since the beginning of the month. I will get them soon. Um, all right. So I'm really, really, really loving these. I know some of you are loving them too. Those of you that have, have bought them already. 
um, yeah they're just just gorgeous so what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to create a sunset or sunrise effect on this and then I'm going to do some silhouette stamping over the top so let me create the background and then I'll talk a little bit more about um, stamping silhouettes I don't use an awful lot of black in my cards normally some people love to create in monochrome and you know grays and blacks and whites I'm not really a monochrome kind of person I'm much more a, a bright color kind of person but I really do love um, a colored background and then black images over the top so that's really what I'm doing today right I've got three colors of ink here pumpkin pie daffodil delight and melon mambo and I'm just working out which order to do them and I'm, I'm going to start with daffodil delight so I'm just rubbing my brush on the ink pad to load it with ink just going over and over a little bit just to work that nicely into the bristles I know some people have been doing this on a clear block which I haven't yet but um I just do it on my grid paper because you know grid paper is perfect it catches everything right and I'm working on a landscape card so I'm going to work from one side on the long edge so I haven't got that much ink on my blending brush I would much rather have less ink and do a few layers and I'm just working round in a circle and I'm actually going to just grab a piece of scrap paper from the end of my desk and just put it on here because um, these blending brushes when you put, lay down the ink with them I guess because the bristles are so sensitive um, they do seem to pick up fingerprints if you're not careful so I'm just going to try and avoid leaving fingerprints on my card so I've just loaded up some more yellow I'll just help work it into the bristles also make sure I don't have any blobby bits and then starting off my card move my hand and then hit my card so I'm just building up a yellow layer which I think is showing so that's good so that's the first part of my sunrise or sunset I don't know which it's going to be we'll see sometimes I think I'm doing one and it looks more like the other and other times it doesn't really matter all right I'm going to change color now to pumpkin pie So I've loaded up the brush just the same, just work some of that ink into the bristles and again I'm going to move my hand before I hit the card. I'm working around in a circle and I just keep going because even when you've gone over a bit, as you come back over it a few more times, you just blend the ink that's sitting on the card that bit better. And now I'm going to come in with the yellow one again, just a little bit of yellow ink on there. And I'm just going to work over this join between the two colours with the first colour I laid down. And that just helps blend that dividing line just a little bit more. There we are. All right. I've just dipped my thumb in the orange ink. So there we go. That's another use for grid paper. Wipe off your inky fingers on it and I'm going to bring in Melon Mambo okay check that on my paper move my hand and then make contact with the card it's a really intense colour melon, melon mambo but um, if you don't use too much ink at a time it's actually quite delicate so what do you think is this going to be sunrise or sunset you need you probably need to see it around the right way don't you first right and then I'll just come back with the other color here which was the pumpkin pie just a little bit on that dividing line just to help blend the orange and the pink together I love orange and pink together. It's one of my favourite combinations, possibly with some lime green. Okay, so that is my panel. I think it's pretty much done. Which way up? I think I'm going to have it that way up. Yeah, yellow at the top. So is it a sunrise or a sunset? What do you reckon? I'm going to close up those ink pads. 
because we all know what happens when I leave ink pads open <laughs> and it's not good okay let's put those out of the way along with the blending brushes right so I'm now going to bring in some stamps now my favorite set probably for stamping silhouettes is this set waterfront I know lots of you have got it um, I have used and used and used this set um, I've got out some of the stamps ready you can see that they are really stained um, I think I've used pretty much every stamp in this some more than others it's absolutely lovely set I like it because you've got these kind of organic shapes which can be anything um, so that can be a mountain that can be a cloud um, if you turn it this way it can be like the Sun reflecting on water or the moon come to that these bits here can be beach or they can be uh, texture in water they're just absolutely fabulous so I really really like them I've pulled out this image here this one and the palm trees the palm trees is a there's a trunk image and there's um, a palm frond image and then I've also gone to beautiful moments which is a really lovely set and I've just taken these two birds here um, just to, to put a couple of, of gulls in right Sandy saying this is a sunrise D the darker would be at the top if it was a sunset is that right Sandy I suppose it is thinking about it because where is the Sun so yeah interesting interesting okay so my sunrise card then um, and for ink I'm using memento we don't have one of our classic ink pads with black um, we have memento tuxedo black so this is not a stamping up product um, it's a fantastic black ink though and it's not as large as our ink pads so sometimes if I'm inking up a big stamp I will take the ink pad and go to the stamp rather than having it up this way to ink my stamp it's also a felt ink pad I don't know if that will show uh, and that means that you need to put more pressure on it to ink up your stamp There's, it's not squidgy and spongy it's quite firm so you'll hear that I'll be banging my um <laughs> banging my stamps on it to ink them up we got a refill for it in the catalog so once you've got the ink pad just buy a refill um, and you can top it up so that your stamps are inked up really nice and blackly and the last thing I'm going to do is just pop a foam stamping mat underneath my grid paper because these are photopolymer stamps. Um, I don't know if I'm stamping off the edge or not today, so I'll put my mat underneath just in case I do so I don't get it inky. So I'm going to ink up this mountain stamp first. And I'm going to stamp this in the middle. So I'm going with a tropical island at sunrise. That's my kind of picture in my head. It's a fantasy island, so it doesn't have to be like anything I've ever seen before. So now I've just inked up this long kind of strip. And let me have a look which way am I going to do it? That way, I think. So you can turn it up, use it either way up, and it will be fine. And I'm going to overlap the bottom here just a little bit because what I'm trying to create is the idea of uh, a, a tropical island which has got a high point in the middle and then it's got some low land near the sea and then I'm just going to overlap this a little bit here oh I am going to go off the edge I think am I no I'm not I'm going to pull it across so I don't there we are it doesn't matter how you stamp these images they will work um, they have um, a texture on them so that some areas pick up more ink than others and that means that if you overlap them like I have here you end up with some darker and some lighter areas but that's entirely consistent with uh, the parts that are not overlapped so it just looks absolutely wonderful I think so I'm now going to stamp some palm trees I'm going to start with the, the, the trunks now on one end not sure which end um, yeah this end I think I just want one tree and I've got two on here so I'm going to start off with a bit of washi tape and just mask off one of those trees so I don't get it inky let me have a look which one do I want um, that bigger one I think so I'm going to mask off the smaller one so that will stop that trunk getting inky and the crucial bit when you do this is to remember to take off 
the washi tape otherwise that ink on there will transfer to the project and don't think that I haven't forgotten that myself in the past <laughs> it's very easy to forget that so I'm now going to stamp a trunk there so you can see I've just got that one and then I'm going to do the same with the palm fronds so I'm going to mask off that palm frond there which is slightly more fiddly because it's a more irregular shape but the thing with washi tape is that you can just kind of run run your nail between the images and press press the washi tape into the nooks and crannies there are lots of ways of masking parts of your stamp this is my favorite because it's so quick and easy and I've always got washi tape those of you that have known me for a while know I have a bit of a washi tape habit so <laughs> it's always good to use some there we go so I've now completely covered up that other set of palm fronds so I'm just going to ink this and then remove that washi tape and that tape just goes straight in the bin with all the ink and now I'm going to stamp and because these are photopolymer stamps I can see where my trunk is and I can get my palm fronds in the right place so there we go there's a palm tree and the next palm trees are going to be much easier because I'm going to use both of them so what I am going to do is try and change the angle that one I leaned the stamp quite a long way this one I want to change the angle so that it doesn't necessarily look like it was the same stamp or the same palm tree come to that and then there we go that's the palm fronds so there we go and I just think I need a little bit of reflection in the water, which I wasn't going to do, but I've decided it needs it. So I've now got this image, which in the box is this one. And I'm going to ink the stamp and then stamp it off. So I have less ink. You can't see because I haven't got enough space under my camera, but I've just let me do it here. I've just tested it stamping once, twice, three times and actually I think that is going to be enough ink. So let's do that again, stamp off once, twice. So I'm just going to have a hint of reflection of the island and a lot of the colour is going to show through this. There we are. Okay and I just need some gulls now just to make it the perfect island we need a few birds there they are and that is my card finished I'm happy with that in fact I'm really pleased with that I might have to make a few more of these afterwards so now what I'm going to do is just layer it um, onto some layers of card so I have a black layer which I've cut just an eighth of an inch bigger all the way round than the one I've been stamping on. And I'm using my multi-purpose glue because this will allow me to slide the stamp layer on top of the black one and get those borders nice and straight. Then I've got a layer of Melon Mambo, which you'll remember is one of the ink colours I used. So I've got it nicely coordinated and that's just an eighth of an inch bigger again. So I think that narrow border of black really sets off the colour on the stamped panel. And then finally, uh, I've got a black card base which I have cut as a landscape one. So I'm going to pop that on there. So there we are. That's a simple stamped card, really. I mean, 
it looks far more complicated than it was. Um, I just laid down the inky background, which is much easier to do with the blending brushes than with a dauber or with a piece of sponge, but you absolutely can use those. Um, if you haven't used sponges very much, the technique is the same uh, as I showed you. You're just using a piece of sponge or a dauber. Just practice on some scrap card so you can get a nice even layer. Uh, and then all I've done is lots of stamped images using black ink. Um, so it's completely flat. It won't cost a fortune to post. That's always good. <laughs> And then I've got a piece of card for the insert here. And what I quite like to do on the insert is to just add a little bit of colour using one of the blending brushes. I'm not going to do a full-blown sunset. I could, but I'm not going to. Um, but what I am going to do is add some palm trees. Let me bring back my stamping mat. And I'll do the same on the envelope as well. my insert. I'll stamp the envelope as well while I've got the ink pad open. I'm just really using up the tail end of the ink on the blending brush for this. I'm not adding lots and lots and lots. And I'm going to leave this as a blank card because it's just so useful to have blank cards. I can then send it with a little note inside um, for whatever the occasion. And if I need a particular wording stamped in it, I can add that afterwards. So that's my envelope. Remove the stamping mat. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy says it's lovely. I am pleased with it. You know when you, you create something in your head and then you actually make it. And sometimes it's as you think and sometimes it isn't. Um, this is actually nicer than I imagined. I've done similar ones, but I hadn't done one exactly like this, so you are the first people to see it. There we are. So that's my first silhouette card. Try and get that all in shot for you. I'll leave that for a minute or two, just while I clean off my stamps. Um, and I do have a few other examples of stamped silhouettes to share with you as well to give you some extra ideas so i'm using my scrub to clean my stamps and it's just so fast sandy says i said it's simple to make but it is truly effective thank you sandy that's what i was aiming for um, something that's simple but really effective is great isn't it i mean how good is that doesn't take too long, doesn't take loads of materials. Um, I did use three colours of ink pad. I could have used two plus the black um, and one set of stamps. No, two, sorry, because I added the birds, but I could have missed off the birds and it would still have been nice. So not a lot of materials there. So that's one silhouette. Here's another one that I made with the same stamp set, um, but this time I made it much more of a coastline um, and I've added some of the pine trees. So again, all of them, exactly the same set. There's the trees. Um, the coastline, again, I stamped using the mountains and this straight one here. And this time I did the blended background using Blushing Bride, Balmy Blue and Highland Heather. So it's got a completely different feel, even though the technique is exactly the same. The stamps are the same. Um, I've just changed up the ink colours and the card layer colour. So that's that one. And then you may have seen this card already if you um, were here when I did the lives for the launch of the new catalogues. Um, so this one again, another blended background. This time I've used the Corner Bouquet stamp set, which is a celebration one. And this thank you is from another celebration set called... Heal Your Heart. I can never remember what that one's called. Um, so similar again, black silhouette against a coloured background. So that's just another idea for you. So there we are. That's silhouette cards made using stamping. Now let me bring in some other bits and pieces and do some using die cuts. 
I mentioned to you that um, I will be using some pieces of black card which I've die cut. I've done the die cutting already because I always seem to run out of time when I do these. <laughs> I think I must talk too much. Uh, I've also got a few extra samples to show you as well. We have got lots and lots of dies that work really, really well for this kind of card. So you can see my die cut there. And that is from the Butterfly, Butterfly Beauty Finlets set. This is a mammoth set of dies. All those dies come in the pack. So I've used this large die here. This cuts a very finely detailed outline of a group of butterflies. I don't know what the collective noun for butterflies is. If anybody knows that, let me know. Um, you've also got another very large butterfly die in here, um, which will cut a similar shape, but instead of um, the edges or the, the lines being very fine, they're a bit wider. So you can layer these two together and have one colour underneath and another colour on top. Then there are lots and lots of dies for individual butterflies as well. And you've also got a few twirly bits here um, and a little bit of foliage here. And you can cut some silhouette butterflies out here as well. So there's lots that you can do with the dies. So that's the one I chose to use. I've also used a piece of the celebration paper, the Oso Ombre paper. underneath so instead of inking a background um, I've used the Oso Ombre paper here and cut a piece of that in the Bermuda Bay. I've got a layer of black and I've got a Bermuda Bay card base. So all I'm going to do is take my die cut group of butterflies, you can see how lovely they are, and before I cut them I backed the card with some of the adhesive sheet um, which you will find, oh, I've put the catalogue the other side of the room now, you'll find on the catalogue with the um, other adhesives. All I did was take my card, take one um, of the backing layer pieces off the adhesive sheet and stick it down. It's like a sheet of double-sided tape effectively. So you take off one backing layer, stick it to the card, so I had adhesive on this side and then there was the other backing paper on top so it wasn't sticky. I then cut it this way round with my die on the card side and then I'm left on the back of my die cut with the white backing paper layer and then when I peel that off this will be sticky already. If you're using particularly detailed dies this is an absolutely brilliant option, the adhesive sheet, because trying to put lots of tiny little dots on here would be difficult. If I hold this up you can see for instance how fine this line of card is here. I was a bit heavy handed when I took the card out of the die. I've actually, I don't know if you can see, just snapped it here. But I think that when I lay it down, I'm going to be able to glue that together without too much problem. So I didn't worry about it. Because, you know, in real life, that's what happens, isn't it? We sometimes mess up a little bit. So Sandy's saying a group of butterflies called a flight, a flutter or a rabble. Thank you, Sandy. You are a mine of information. I'm just going to drink the rest of my tea. OK. So now I don't have to do any length of gluing. I've just got to take the backing paper off this. It's actually in a few bits because I used up some scraps of the adhesive sheet. Stuck them all to cover the card. So I've actually got the backing paper in a few pieces as well. <laughs> Sandy says she leads a boring life. <laughs> I don't believe that. Okay, so you can see this is just coming off and being careful because it's such a delicate shape. I've got the bits left behind where that was a, a dividing line in my bits of adhesive sheet. If I'd used one whole piece I wouldn't have little pieces left behind. There's a little bit that was die cut that's stuck on but I think that's it now. So you can see that is sticky all over. Fantastic. So I'm going to have the light part of the paper at the top and I'm just going to arrange these. This is a slightly larger die cut than my layer, but that's OK. There we go. So 
once that is cut instantly you can just stick it down I mean how simple is that now this little bit here that I broke let's see I might need to add just the tiniest touch of glue there or I might not there we go I'm glad I didn't cut that again that's absolutely fine all right so now I just need to decide I've got a few bits overhanging so I might leave them on or I might cut them off let me put that on here and have a look and see what I think and that's going to go on my card base I think I'm going to leave them so that now just needs to be glued onto the black layer and again I've cut it so that it's only an eighth of an inch smaller than my patterned paper uh, sorry an inch of an inch bigger so I've just got a very very narrow board around just to show off the colour and the colours really pop when you add black borders and then I'll attach that to my Bermuda Bay card base and again I'm going to leave this blank with no sentiment but I am going to add a few rhinestones just to give it a little bit of a sparkle I'm going to find my, there we go, my take your pick tool I think I'm going to put them on the background rather than on the butterflies. I was umming and eyeing there, could you tell? So I don't know how many I'm going to add. I'm just playing it by ear. It could be an odd number because odd numbers always look best. I think that's probably enough. It's five there I've added. So now I just need to make my insert, which I've got here. And all I've done is I've die cut another little butterfly. That's from the same die set. Again, I've got the adhesive on the back, so I can just pop that inside. That's really easy. my completed card and then for the envelope I've got an off cut of the paper here which I'm just going to attach to the envelope I know it's a little bit too long so I'm not going to put glue on the whole thing but I decided I would put it on the envelope and then trim it just to get the length perfect enthusiastic with the glue but that's okay so there's the paper oh did you just hear a sneeze that was not me that was my husband and then another little die cut butterfly on there so that's my card and envelope so once you've done your die cutting that's a super quick and easy card to do no even need to do any gluing on that other than your layers so there's a, a card made with silhouettes that are die cut let me show you a couple of other ones um, Belinda and Sandy you will recognize this one this was one that I made with my team at our team meeting earlier this month so for this one I've used the dies from uh, dandy wishes so these are the dies that come bundled with the garden wishes stamp set and I've used this one here and some of the leaves are here we are these sort of pointy leaves or grasses and then these I just punched out with the dragonfly punch the double dragonfly punch and you can see that I did an inky background on here because I can't stop making them <laughs> so that's that one 
and then finally a much bolder one here so here I took a piece of Melon Mambo card and then I inked it on top using Melon Mambo ink, which has just intensified the colour really. Um, Calypso Coral and then Cherry Cobbler. So it's a very reddish pink background. And I added some flowers which I cut using the perennial petals dies. These go with the pretty perennial stamps. Um, and there's lots of lovely flower shapes in here. I've used these two flowers and the leaves and then this small flower as well. And then I added some of this ribbon. I can never remember what it's called. Um, oh, it's all in foreign languages. Metallic mesh. Metallic mesh ribbon, which is carried over from the Christmas catalogue. That's still available. And a few rhinestones. And these little teeny butterflies are cut using the same butterfly dies I made on the card I've just shown you. Um, so really teensy butterflies in there as well. So there we go. That's um, another another version. And then I just inked the corner of the envelope. Um, that is from the butterfly set called Beauty Abound. Butterflies and, and kind of leaves and things which coordinates with these dies. And then the flower is from this same stamp set that coordinates with these dies. So we've got pretty perennials and we've got beauty abounds. So that's that one. Then there's this one. And then the one that I made just now here. Oops. Hopefully I've got all those in. So those are the three with die cut silhouettes. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy says she loves it. I'm very glad to hear it. So I encourage you to have a play with silhouettes. If you haven't been making as we've been going along, if you have been making as we've been going along, please, please post a photograph. I would love to see that. Um, I know sometimes people find it difficult to post photographs on Facebook. You can always email it to me for me to post for you. It would be really nice to see what you've done. If you haven't been playing along, then have a go. Die cut some black card and put it on a brighter background. Um, and of course, if I move those out of the way, the other option is to stamp with black ink on a bright background. Use some coloured card or create an inky background yourself. It's just so effective having that black to make the colours really, really pop. Now, you're going to ask me what I'm doing next week, aren't you? And the honest answer is, I don't know. Um, but I will I will post it in an event and let you know then and tell you what you need if you want to craft along. However, in the how to series, I'm going to be looking at um, when you get a set of new stamps, how to put the labels on. So this will be the rubber stamps uh, with the foam backing and they come with a separate label sheet. And there are difficult ways of putting the labels on and there are easy ways. And of course, I'm going to show you the easy way. So that will be my how to series next week. So let me just cover you over and turn the camera back up and I can say a proper goodbye to you. Okay, I'm hopefully not going to be upside down. Okay, for the big reveal to show itself on my iPad, make sure that I'm where I think I am, as it were. Um, and then yes, it's time to go. Yes, it looks like I am. So thank you ever so much for joining me. Um, thank you for joining me live. And if you're watching this either on the replay on Facebook or on YouTube, then thank you also. Let me know if you've got any questions. Um, remember, if you want to book techniques or fancy fold classes or the spring extravaganza, all those bookings close on Friday next week. So you've got a week to think about it. If you don't have information and you'd like it, then just drop me an email and I can send you some out. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I've got a whole flood of messages coming in. Let's have a look. Sandy remembers the card we did at training. Belinda needs to have a try later. Oh, lovely, Belinda. I can't wait to see what you create. Um, thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. And thank you, Lorraine. Sandy's been taking pictures and notes. Oh, well done, Sandy. Gold star. Um, and Marjorie's going to try some later too. And everybody says goodbye to everyone. So it's been lovely to spend time with you. I hope you have a good weekend, whatever you're doing. And I will see you again next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.